If you want all the latest news of NBA 2K and also NBA in general, you should follow me on my Twitter account at PackHoopsYT. Not only that, I do giveaways all the time when it comes to VC, games, and also even consoles. So check it out, follow me, and see you there. In this video, we have a lot of trades that happen on draft night for the NBA. I'm going to cover all the major trades, how they look in NBA 2K21, and see if the ratings, what teams got better, etc. Get pass out to the pack. It is pack here. Before this video starts, please be an OG, join the pack, and subscribe. That would be very helpful for the channel. Let's get to 300,000 subscribers before 2K22 comes out. That'd be really great. I cover NBA news and 2K news, so that'd be awesome. And leave a like on the video. It helps the algorithm out. And let's get this video started. So I want to cover the most obvious and most important trade that everybody and their mother cares about, and that is the Russell Westbrook trade. He has been traded to the Los Angeles Lakers. Now, a lot of people have very, very strong opinions about this trade. I'm going to give you my opinion, but letting you know right now, I always try to see the brighter side of teams situations. And I usually try to just be like, I see the positives in it. Okay. So letting you know right now that I'm not going to be super negative about this. So LeBron James and Anthony Davis now have a clear third option. Now this has been a conversation for two years now, ever since they won the championship and last year, is that if LeBron and AD are the only ones succeeding and nobody else is stepping up, that was a problem. That's how they got Dennis Schroeder because Dennis Schroeder and also Montrose Harrell, in theory, were supposed to be at least a third or fourth option to score when these two are having bad nights. Or even if one person's having a bad night, you want your third option to step up. A great example of this is the Bucks. They had that massive problem. And when they got Drew Holiday, that fixed it. And they just freaking won a championship. So in theory, getting a third option is a really, really, really good idea. So the Lakers said, listen, we have LeBron. He is about to be 36. Or I think he's already 36. And we got a couple years left where he's in his prime, or I guess, relative to his prime and you have anthony davis who's an injury prone player and for all we know he's not going to be good next couple years after injuries right so you want to win now and that makes sense so you get russell westbrook who's still in his prime who's still a monster you pick him up it makes perfect sense here's the problem they cannot shoot threes especially if andre drummond's going to be their center they really can't shoot threes i mean anthony davis and lebron can hit but these two can't and then their shooting guard, technically, they don't even have one. According to 2K, their starting lineup is going to be Wesley Matthews at the shooting guard, which isn't a bad shooting guard. But, I mean, THT is another option, but not really. I guess you could start Caruso or Schroeder if you really wanted to. Ben McLemore is an option, or they could sign someone free agency. There's a lot of things that they should do here, but... Russell Westbrook is somebody that's going to attack the paint, take ball handling pressure off of Brown James, and get other people open, which is something that you always want on your team. And everybody that calls him stat patter, don't know basketball. The guy gets rebounds, the guy gets people open, and he can finish in the paint really well. Is his shooting poor? Yes, but now he doesn't have to force shots at all because there's other people on the team that can do that for him. And that's good. Now, on the contrary side, the Wizards were the one that traded for, uh, well, they traded for Montrez Harrell, and Kyle Kuzma, and also Contavious Caldwell Pope as well. Those are those three players that were traded and picks for Russell Westbrook, right? Okay, so let's start with Montrezl Harrell. Now that you've traded the clear second option on this team, it's interesting. My reasoning is I don't think the Wizards should have traded at all. In my opinion, this is me personally, okay? You need to remember where they were last season. They were losing for the first half of the year, but the second half of the year, they were playing very well, if you guys don't remember. Bradley Beal's only gonna get better. Russell Westbrook was finding a rhythm. Thomas Bryant was really good before he got injured, and now he's coming back, okay? Rui Hachimura is getting better every season, and Daniel Gafford was really solid, okay? Why are you trading away something that was kind of starting to work? Do you understand what I'm saying? Why? It was starting to look good. So unless Beal actually does get traded, if he, like, then I get it, right? But if he doesn't get traded, yeah, Machos Harrell can get you 20 points per game. Yes, Thomas Bryant and, and Rudy Hashimura are still there. But you have one guard now. And yes, you take a gamble with picking up Kyle Kuzma. And theoretically, Kyle Kuzma could be the second option on the team. Like, you could make him a player that gets a lot more possession and a lot more touches to shoot more shots. So in theory, this could work. But... That, that's a gamble compared to you had Russell Westbrook already. You know what I mean? 
but I could see it working if Kyle Kuzma actually plays very well because we know there was that season in 2019 where he averaged 19 points per game efficiently. Well, not three wise, but field goal percentage wise efficiently. So like he can get better. It's just we'll have to wait and see this season with the Wizards when he gets a full chance, right? But we'll see. Uh, and then Contavious Caldwell Pope's an obvious good option. He's a shooter. He plays defense. He fits on any team, right? So the starting lineup will be Ro Neto, who is actually a very good point guard and is getting better every year. Bradley Beal, Kyle Kuzma, Rui Hachimura, and Montrezl Harrell. Or you could switch with Thomas Bryant. It's kind of depends on what they want, right? But yeah, that is a starting lineup. In theory, in the East, maybe they should still be able to make the playoffs, but I don't know. I feel like unless, unless Kuzma turns out to be really good, this is a bad gamble, in my opinion. The next trade isn't as exciting. We have Ricky Rubio going to the Cleveland Cavaliers for Terry on Prince on the Timberwolves. Um, you already have a point guard in Darius Carlin. Now you get a really good backup point guard with Ricky Rubio. Hope you hope that Colin Sexton, Jared Allen, and Darius Carlin get a lot better next season. And then you have a nice bench with Ricky Rubio, Isaiah Hardenstein, who, who has a chance, uh, Coro, and then whatever pick they got. And then they have a chance here, right? They, I mean, they were looking really good at the start of the year last year. They could maybe get even better this year, hopefully. I mean, Cleveland is just looking to make their roster as good as they can with what they got. I mean, it's a small market team. Not a lot of people want to go there. I think they do a good job of picking up a guy who's doing crazy right now in the Olympics. So that's good. Now, a super underrated topic, though, is the Timberwolves. Because Carl Anthony Towns, D'Angelo Russell, and Anthony Edwards all could get really good next season. On top of that, Malik Beasley is a stud. Nas Reed was looking really good last season, like really good. I'm telling y'all right now, this is looking like a good team next season. This is one of those teams that could absolutely blow up. So when you pick up somebody like Terion Prince, who's a great backup player on the bench, you're filling out that bench. You're planning something that's going to work out for this team very, very well. And according to 2K, Terion Prince would be the 10th option, maybe with Jaden McDaniels, it would depend on who plays better. But I think this team could be dangerous next season. I think that's a great pickup for them. And last, kind of small trade, but low-key maybe a big trade, is the Suns. So they trade away Jevon Carter for Landry Shaman. Okay. I was saying on the Nets, why doesn't Landry Shaman get more minutes? He was really good on the Clippers, right? On the Clippers, he's averaging nine points, only played 27 minutes. I mean, play him a little more. And now the Suns pick him up, who are looking to come back next season even stronger to compete for championship again. And Landry Shaman's a bench option that can get buckets and is a great, great pickup. I think that this could, this is a gamble, but it's a really, really good one because all they gave up was Jevon Carter. You take that every day because he could blow up on this team for all we know. And for the Nets, you get a shooting guard or point guard, however you play him, probably point guard. Backup, who can, I mean, if, if Kyrie gets hurt or if Spencer Dinwiddie's not coming back, which is probably the case, Javon will probably get some minutes and it's, it's not, it's a very safe pickup. It's very decent. He's a good player, he is. Okay, those are all the major trades. What do y'all think about all of them? Which ones are cash or trash? Leave it in the comments below. If you like this channel, please give it a sub. I'll see you guys next time.